Okay, so all I had done is take these these back two little layers, these background plates, and play with their their levels, which give the lights and darks, and their color balance, which gives the temperature and a little bit of saturation. Now I'm going to do that same thing to the Cement City. And I liked what I did to the background, so now I want to make the Cement City match, but also stand out as a little bit warmer as it comes forward. So first thing I'll go to is Levels. And I'm going to try Brightening, and that doesn't work, right? Remember, I'm only playing with the Midtone slider, so I'm going to try Deepening. I don't want to go too far, but I want to basically match the shadow value of my background at that level, and then maybe push it a little bit more because contrast comes forward. I want this to feel like it's coming forward a little bit from this background. Okay, good. And then I can always hit Command Z and C. So that's just a slight lightening at the back and a deepening there. Next, I'm going to go to Color Balance. I'm going to shift the temperature maybe a little bit more towards the red, but not, not that far. Maybe a little bit more towards the magenta, but not that far. And I don't want to go full on to the warms because we're not in the foreground yet. This is just the middle ground. So that makes a big difference. Makes it more dimensional. Then lastly, if I wanted to, I could play with hue saturation. I could change the hue a little bit, just a little bit on that top slider to the left or right. And yeah, I'm going to shift it a little bit to the right. That just helps really sync those back. And then saturation, I can either intensify it, or I can take it back. I'm going to, this is supposed to be a wasteland, so I am going to just take it, take it down a little bit. So it goes from that to that. So more and more subtle as we go. Save it. It's good. Next, the big coral. Now, because this is foreground, closer to the foreground, its lighting is going to be a little bit more dramatic. So with the levels, I'm going to push this a little bit brighter. And then there's another way we can use levels. Besides just using the midtone slider, we can also limit the outputs. So I want it to come forward, but I can also limit the highlights to be not quite so bright. It's kind of dulls it. So especially because this photo was taken with a flash underwater, that's a pretty intense highlight. So let me just limit those highlights a little bit, like so. I can also limit the shadows a little bit. But I don't think I want to, because contrast comes forward. So now, with color balance, I'm going to shift it a little bit warmer. I'm going to shift the shadows. Well, notice I've only done mid-tone so far. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to shift it a little bit more towards the green. Yeah, about like that. Now the highlights, this is a trick for foreground that I really like. We're going to use it for your creatures later. I'm going to check on color balance, not the midtones, but the highlights. And the highlights I'm going to warm up. I'm going to push towards yellow and towards red. Then the shadows, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to push those towards cyan and towards blue. It doesn't take a lot, but you'll see how that really starts to round out and make the foreground more dimensional. So look at the difference here from that to this. And that's actually not darkening, that's just changing the color temperature. So the color temperature makes it look a lot darker now. And so this feels like it's really starting to come forward in a way it wasn't before. Next, I have this one, and I'm going to do the same things, but slightly different choices. So these levels, I'm going to push a little bit darker. No, I'm going to make them brighter. And I'm going to limit the highlights. So I was looking for it. Maybe even limit the, the darks. Just slightly. Then I'm going to go to color balance. Shift the midtones more towards the red. Let's 
Go for the highlights and warm them up. Go for the shadows and cool them down. So if there's a lot of green in this. I might work against the green by going a little bit more magenta. Okay. The close barrels. Start with levels. Try darkening them. Limiting the highlights a little bit because they're underwater. So there's a lot of, um, you know, stuff between the viewer. So you're not going to have such sharp contrast of lights and darks. Now the color, color balance. I have to put a lot of cyan into it because they're underwater. I got to put some blue into it. You know, so they feel like we're looking through those colors instead of just daylight. I can try pushing them a little bit more red. That works a little bit better than green. I can try the highlights and try warming them up. I can try the shadows and try cooling them down. Might be a little overdone, but you see it makes a big difference in how they sit in the space. And then last, my tree coral. This is the ultimate foreground. So if anything, I want to just really get as much texture and color and contrast from it as possible. So, color balance, I get to choose, and I think I want to warm it up, but not towards red, more towards the yellows and oranges. Maybe some of those pinks, yeah, that's working. Highlights, let's warm them up a little. Shadows, let's cool them down. You can do the opposite. This is just kind of the traditional way. Warm highlights, cool shadows. Okay. And then, I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to play with the hue saturation. I can intensify that saturation in the foreground. If I want. And I can push the hue one way or the other. Looking pretty well. But then I might realize, okay, I want to take that hue saturation just down a little bit. And then I might say, well, these barrels now, I need to just intensify the hue just a little bit. Like I want yellow, not so orange. I'm going to shift the hue. And then do I want them really saturated? No. Maybe just slightly more saturated than I had. So that they show up. And then this coral is just not looking right. I'm going to take that layer and see what I can do with color to work with it. Or maybe even just with placement. Or I might even just need to bring in a new element. All right. So... Be willing to do that. And to do that, you go back to your references. And unfortunately, my previews, my computer is too full to show them. But I've got this interesting stuff. This is actually a pretty good one. I'm going to bring this in. Because this is like the dead coral, right? And I, my concept was that it was irradiated and mostly... A wasteland except around this nuclear waste it's it's kind of being revitalized right so if I put that in there and then I rasterize it and I just do some quick cutting out using the magic wand holding down shift and adding in the lasso and deleting and going to the magic wand again Getting all this gunk. Yeah, I think I can make that work. And now I'm going to play with the color of that. See? So sometimes 
especially after you've rough cut and played with color, bringing in new elements can really help. So now I'm going to play with the levels. Don't ever just take the levels and the color that's given. Always adjust it for yourself. And I'm going to limit the, the shadows a little bit because this is more mid-tone. I don't want them coming forward so much. Maybe there. Then color balance is going to make a big difference. More towards the reds, just slightly. There we go. Yeah, I think that's all it takes. All right, so now I'm going to save. And I've gotten pretty much to where you want to be um, by the beginning of Monday's class. Where then we're just going to start doing refined cutouts, right? So looking at the edges. And then I'm seeing, oh, around that coral, yeah, that's messy. But the color's great, the detail's great. Now I just got to work on these seams. Take this one out of there. We don't need it anymore. All right. So how do I clean up seams? Well, now I'm going to work from the foreground back because the foreground is the most obvious. So I go from my top open layer, but I'm going to keep all the layers visible. And now I'm going to use a different tool, not just the lasso to delete, but I'm going to use the eraser. So this is the first time we're using the eraser tool. And the eraser tool is controlled by the brushes. And what I want you to use is the soft round pressure brush. So it's the third one down. And we're using this with a tablet. Set your opacity at 100%, but make your size fewer than 50 pixels. So that means the harder you press, the more of that circle will get erased. But it's with a soft edge. So that allows you to get in there. I'm going to go even smaller. So I can just cut this out with a lot of control. This is very similar to using the lasso with the um, the feathering option filled in. But this will give you just more direct control. And for the foreground, that's what you want. Unfortunately, it's going a little slow. I'm going to save this. And it's important that you work at 100% because you don't want to leave any little remnants. Why is this brush going so slow? <laughs> Um, you can also set the hardness, and I actually don't want it on 0%. I probably want it more on like 50. So it's not so soft everywhere. That some of these corals are pretty sharp. And I'm just getting rid of that little blue halo. Now you can zoom in with Command Plus and get more detail. But honestly, the closest you ever want to get is about 125%, right? So here's 100%. If I zoom in from there, it's 200%. And if I stay at 200% for everything, that's beyond what you can see when you print. So as long as I'm looking at it at at least 100%, and maybe a little bit closer, I'm focusing on the right level of detail for my print. We're not sweating every pixel. We're sweating what the eye can see in your printout at the end of the day. Now, as we go back from the foreground, there are other kind of selection softening options we might use. But for the foreground element, I just want to really control it. And so using the direct eraser tool is a good skill to have where we want to practice it. 